Today, we learn what CICD means and how we can enable it with GitHub Actions. Welcome to this video on GitHub and DevOps. My name is Kevin Fiesel, and I'm the proprietor of Catalyxy Services LLC, a consulting firm which specializes in work all across the data platform space, especially SQL Server. Our prior video covered using GitHub Actions to implement infrastructure as code. In this video, we're going back to the application development side of the house and see how we can use GitHub Actions to implement CI-CD practices. But before we do that, maybe we should take a moment and talk about what CI and CD are and why they're so useful. You know where to go. When we talk about CI-CD in the GitHub world, we're referring to two concepts known as continuous integration and continuous deployment. First up, let's talk about continuous integration. The idea here is that we are frequently committing code into a shared repository, but it's not just about checking in code. This is an opportunity for us to test the code and make sure that things work the way we expect it to. There are a variety of tests we can perform as part of continuous integration. Linters are the first type. These are rules engines that check your code for validity and quality. In interpreted languages like a JavaScript or Python, linters help us find syntax errors that would cause the code to fail. They also help us with code quality. If your code technically works, but isn't the best way to perform a task, a linter could help you find the issue. You can even use linters for finding security issues. In compiled languages like f -sharp, we already have a compiler that runs a series of syntactical correctness checks, so linters help us more with the latter two cases rather than finding syntax errors. The next type is what I might bundle together as classical test types. We have unit tests, whose intent is to test one bit of functionality in isolation. We have integration tests, which are there to test how different systems integrate together. As developers, we tend to merge a whole lot of things into integration testing, but if I were to break things out a little further, we have system tests. System tests give us an idea of how an entire system behaves, not just a single function or a specific integration point. And regression tests provide us a suite of specific tests that we can add after finding a bug in the code, ensuring that we don't reintroduce the error in the future. There are plenty of other test types, but I'll emphasize one more here because we'll spend more time on it in a later video. Security tests. There are some built-in GitHub capabilities that make security testing much easier. And the nice thing is that most of it is freely available for open source repositories. The next part of the acronym is continuous deployment. Sometimes you'll hear about continuous deployment and sometimes about continuous delivery. Let me disambiguate that here. We've talked about continuous integration or CI. As for continuous delivery, this is where we have an automated process for release after we successfully build and test the code in our CI process. We make it so a human can push a button and deploy out the latest successful build of our application. Then we get to continuous deployment. With continuous deployment, we remove the human George Jetsoning his way through the process. If the build passes all of the existing tests and pipeline stages, we ship it right then and there. We don't need a person to babysit, waiting to push a button to move it out. Continuous deployment does require more trust than continuous delivery. So for existing products and existing systems, you'd probably want to transition from continuous delivery to continuous deployment over time. We are under no such restrictions, however, so let's just cowboy our way into CI-CD. This demo covers exercise three, task three of the training on implementing DevOps practices. We are going to do quite a bit here, as you can see on the screen. We'll create a new GitHub Actions workflow for .NET apps. We're going to need to build a C-sharp project in three steps, restore packages, build the project, and run our existing test library. After that, we'll build a Docker file and containerize the .NET project, storing it in our container registry. But that's not enough. No, we're going to add a second job after that. We'll authenticate to the container registry and deploy the container to each environment in turn. 
In practice, we'd probably want to have different actions workflows for different environments, but we'll do it all in one stop here just to show you that it's possible. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new service principle. I'll show you the command, though it will require that you put in your subscription ID, so I don't want to do that here. When you run this command, you'll get back a block of JSON. Copy the entire block of JSON you get back. Then switch over to GitHub. In the settings page, we'll navigate to the security menu and into the secrets and variables section. Inside here, I'll choose actions. Then I'll add a new repository secret, which we'll call Azure Credentials. This is an example of what the JSON output should look like. I'll save the secret and now it's available to us in GitHub. Now that I've done this, let's create a new GitHub Actions workflow. I'll navigate to the Actions page and choose the New Workflow button. Scrolling down to the Continuous Integration section, I want to configure a .NET workflow. There are a few things that look similar, so make sure you get the right one. This takes us to a YAML interface with a template. Let's first talk about what's on this template, and then we'll talk about what we need to change for our project. This starts with a name, calling it .NET. Then we can see that the workflow will run whenever we push directly into the main branch or whenever there is a pull request into the main branch. There is one job in this workflow, and that job's name is build. It runs on Ubuntu and has a few steps. Our first step is to check out the code onto our GitHub runner virtual machine. Then we'll make sure that the latest version of .NET 8 is installed on the runner. The next step after that is to restore any NuGet package dependencies we have using the .NET restore command. Once we have all the packages we need, we can build the project. Assuming that the project builds successfully, the final step in this workflow is to test the project. Once we get all the pieces in place, this will give us our continuous integration solution. What we're going to do then is we'll narrow down the scope on when this workflow runs. We already know that there's some infrastructure as code work in the repo, so we don't want to rebuild the application if, say, one of our sysadmins updates the BICEP script covering Azure resources. So let's add a filter here on the push and pull request triggers, ensuring that we only build if a change happens in the application folder. I'm using two asterisks because we want this to be a recursive path check. Any file inside of application, no matter how many levels deep, can trigger the workflow. I'm also going to add a workflow dispatch trigger, as sometimes I may want to kick off the build manually. Next, we'll go down into the job steps and add a bit to the .NET commands. We're going to need to point to the csproj file because it's not in the root of our repository. I'll paste in the location, showing that it's the Razor Pages test sample project. That'll do for dependency restoration and build, but for testing, we've got a different csproj file altogether, the Razor Pages test sample dot tests project. With this in place, I'll commit the changes into the main branch. That will kick off an instance of the workflow, so we can wait for a moment and see the build running. I can, of course, click into the job run and see details on the build job. Inside there, I can see the different steps as the GitHub runner kicks them off. I won't dwell on this, however, because we have a lot more to do first. Let's go back into the workflow file and make some more changes. The next thing I want to do is add some environment variables. We can use these environment variables later on in the script, making our code a little bit clearer. I've got four environment variables in total. The first one points to my Azure Container Registry location. The second gives the name of the container repository. That doesn't have to be the same as my GitHub repository name, as you can see here. Then we have a Docker folder path, telling Docker where to start looking for things. I also have the GitHub run number as a tag, so I can keep track of different versions of the container. The on clause has stayed the same, so let's move beyond that. The build job is also the same, but we're going to need to add a new job, which I'll call Docker build push. This will run on Ubuntu and depend on build succeeding. The idea is, once our tests pass and the application code is working as expected, we'll push out that version of the code and make it available in the Azure Container Registry. Inside this job, we've got a few steps. First, we need to check out the code on the runner. As a quick note, when we have different jobs, 
we don't guarantee the same GitHub runner virtual machine will execute each and every job, so we need to check the code out for this job as well. Then we want to log into our Azure Container Registry using the Docker login action. We'll send in three secrets, one for the login server, one for the username, and one for the password. But uh, we don't have those yet, so give me a moment and we'll fix that soon. Next, we have a step to perform a Docker build operation. We are calling our Azure Container Registry, referencing the environment variable here with a dollar sign first, and then we're sending it to the correct repo name and tagging it with our build number to make sure we have a unique tag per version. Finally, we perform a Docker push operation. Knowing that we need a few details, let's switch back to the Azure portal. In the portal, I'll search for container registries. I can see my container registry on the list, so let's select it. I am going to need three pieces of information, which I can get from the access keys option in the settings menu. I'll copy the login server, username, and password columns, pasting them locally for my benefit. Then I can open a new tab with the settings menu in GitHub and navigate back to GitHub Action Secrets. I'll create one secret called ACR login server and paste in the login server value. I'll create a second one called ACR username and paste in my service username. And there's a third one, ACR password, so I'll paste that one in as well. We've got all of the repository secrets in place, and I can go back to the tab with my workflow YAML script and commit the changes. Doing so will kick off this job, performing a build operation and then pushing the finished container image into my Azure Container Registry. But we're still not quite done yet. This is some good progress, but ultimately we're still not actually getting our code out onto the servers. That's where the last set of steps will come in. This is, admittedly, something I'd absolutely hesitate to do in real life. But this is really easy to see in action, and in fairness, some of the difference is just that I would have workflow parameters that force out to one environment at a time, rather than building to one after the other after the third. Regardless, let's look at the three new jobs that I've just pasted in. The first of the three is to deploy to dev. This job runs on Ubuntu after we've successfully pushed our container image into ACR. We're going to ship the code off into our dev environment, and we'll do this in two steps. The first step has us log into the Azure CLI using our Azure credentials. The second then performs a web app deployment. Note that we don't need to grab source control for this job, as our code is already in the container registry, ready to go. After that, I have a similar story for deploying to test and then to prod. One thing I do want to point out is that I do actually need to hard code the registry name and repo in this job. It's a weird thing about the way the web app deploy GitHub action works is that its images parameter doesn't accept environment variables. If you try to use environment variables, you'll get a strange error around Linux FX version that makes no sense when you attempt to troubleshoot it. Basically, this sucks, but we'll deal with it. Once we commit those changes, we will once again begin the cycle. Now there are five jobs that run one after the other. I'll pause here and wait until everything is complete. And it looks like everything is done rolling out. So let's run a quick test and go to a website. Here we go, one .NET web app hosted in Azure. The best part is, if I make any changes in source control, they'll automatically go through the same process and I'll end up with the code in prod with no special effort on my part. Hey everybody, future me here. As I was running through the demo and preparing the video for editing, I realized that I never actually showed you the Docker file. I'd like to show that to you right now though to make up for it. The Docker file itself belongs in application slash source slash razor pages test sample and is a file named Dockerfile. Inside that file, we have a short script explaining what I'd like my containerized environment to look like. I'm going to start with the .NET SDK 8.0 as my build environment and create a working directory on it in slash app. From there, I'll copy my c -sharp project file and run .NET restore on it, bringing in any packages that I need. 
After that, I'll copy all of the other files into the container as well and run .NET Publish using the release configuration and publishing the artifacts into an out folder. After doing this, I don't need the full SDK anymore and can just use the ASP.NET runtime for .NET 8.0. I'll start in the slash app folder again and will copy everything from slash app slash out locally. This will make my published artifacts available in the local directory of my container. Finally, I'll set the .NET entry point to Razor Pages Test Sample.dll, which is what my Azure App Service will need in order to know how to launch the web page. There's no magic to this Docker file, and it's all relatively simple, but I still wanted to take a few moments to discuss it. Now, back to present tense me. Setting all of this up took a fair amount of time, but by the end of this video, we now have a simple CI CD process in place for a .NET web application. There is a lot more we can do, and I don't want to make it sound like CI CD in general is the type of thing you set up in an hour and then you're done with it forever. But we can also see it's not rocket surgery. GitHub does make it easy to solve a large variety of common problems around integration and deployment. In the next video, I'll explain why it's not a great idea to check directly into your primary branches and see what we can do about it. We'll have links and show notes in the description below. And until we see each other in the next video, take care.